All right, I have been adding uh, duotone shadows on top of my flat color. And when I click those on, it makes my flat colors now look all of a sudden really, really bright. And that does kind of make sense since I use the pastels to fill a lot of them. Before I go too much further, though I like some of the things that are happening, and I'm just using my lasso to cut out highlights, from my duotone shadows. What I can also do is to make a duotone highlights layer, which I often recommend. And so the way you do that is you just take your flat color layer and you duplicate it. I have to unlock it first to duplicate it. Command J. Go back and lock your flat color. But now I can turn it off and I can change my flat color with adjustments and I can make it a little bit brighter in the midtones. Just a little bit. And you'll notice when colors are super saturated like the yellow and the green they're not going to change too much. So if the idea is to, to flood all of this with white, I might also need to go to image adjustment and hue saturation and actually add lightness and take saturation down a little bit. And then I can even use the master setting and go to greens and add just lightness to the greens. And same with yellows, since I have those intense yellows. Just add lightness to the yellows. And that cyan is pretty intense, so I might add some lightness to that, take away some saturation. So it feels like it's all kind of bathed in light. So now this is truly all pastels. And notice how much brighter that is than, um, it actually looks like a temporary tattoo, but how much brighter that is than my flat colors. Then when I turn on my Dutone, it's going to be really stark at how different the black and whites are, especially when you put them on different backgrounds, right? And that's kind of a good way to work because these Duotone layers, like my shadows, I can always adjust them by taking down their opacity. Same thing with the highlights. I can always adjust them by taking down their opacity. But right now we're just cutting things out. So I'm going to take my duotone shadows down to about 70%. And I'll take my duotone highlights down to about 70%. But this gives me the option of really amping them up when I need to. And when you work on just a solid white background, you tend to make things a little bit darker then if you work on a black background, you tend to make things a little bit too bright. So I recommend working with, as you're picking your coloring, just working on a gray background. Other ways you can do duotone. Just like we played with your uh, black shape logo and we gave it layer styles, we can give layer styles to your black line art. If you want it to show up on a dark background, like on a poster or on a t-shirt, we can give it an offset, right? So we can take it and we can give it an outer glow. And I can set that outer glow to be any color I want. I'm not limited to just white anymore. So I could do kind of a, a bone warm white. And then I can make it noisier. And I can make it smaller. But notice, now that's going to affect around every line. So all of a sudden, even where I haven't done duotone, it's given me a little bit of duotone, but this is a softer edge. And I can play with it, so I give it a, uh, I don't recommend it, but I can fill it in, take away the noise, give it a strong opacity, and make it 
a hard edge duotone as well. Just with these little outlines. So soft edged, hard edged, textured, not textured. These are all options you have just as layer styles that you can turn on and off. So usually I would play with those at the end, but know that those are options to you. So let me lock those back up. And let me continue cutting away from my duotone shadows. So that's working pretty well. You don't need to overdo it. My least favorite thing to do this with is like man-made kind of mechanical shapes, like these sunbeams. It's a pain to, to try to lasso with straight lines, right? So sometimes when that happens, I'll change my lasso to the polygonal lasso, and then I can just get perfect straights if I want them to delete out. but sometimes that can look a little forced. Just showing you all your different options for your hard edge duotone. Okay, so we've done quite a bit with color today. Next class, we're gonna turn these in and I'm gonna show you how you do color holds and special effects on the top. So we get this ready for our next assignment where we can add text to it. So nice work. I'm here after class. If you need some time to, to get it set up, if you're not flatting your colors, please stay behind so I can get your EPS set up in Photoshop so we can start putting digital color in. Because it is a new skill. And and use the weekend to find a contemporary digital artist you want to present on. And then sign up for it under assignments for your final presentations. Those start November 9th. Take care. Next time I'll see you will be Halloween. And some of these computers will be changed. Have a good weekend. So remember, your computers will be swapped out next class. So make sure you, um, Maribel and Elena, make sure you back up your work. Please connect with um, our new computer. Yeah. 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 And all of this digital coloring, we can do the same way in Photopea. So you don't need access to Photoshop to do these same techniques. So if you want to work on it from a browser, you certainly can. Just keep your resolution at 350 by at least 8 by 10. And I'll put these digital coloring videos up right after I finish with this one. You too.
So remember, you can always modify your selections as you're cutting the duotone. So here I'm going to hold down Option to subtract that chunk before I delete. I'm also going to subtract out right along here. And it's not hard. If you make a mistake, like I cut out a little bit, I didn't mean to from there. It's not hard to fix that. It's just practicing all of those skills of selections that we practice during compositing projects. So if I want to fill this in, I'm simply going to use my paint bucket or my paintbrush. Select and paint it in. Or I can just use the paint bucket, hold down Option, Select, and then Fill. Oops. I have to divide this. So sometimes you do a little fine touch, touch up with your. Uh, your paintbrush, but it's not bad. And the reason it's not showing up at 100% opacity is just because I have that layer at 70% right now. Maybe I want to add it into my flat color layer. <laughs> 